So starting with why Oracle integrations. So Oracle integration is a complete secure lightweight integration. So in terms of if you see uh, to build a SOA application earlier we before uh, before YC we used to build our integrations in SOA or before that we used to build everything on our EBS where we have access for database and we used to build all integrations and manage our integrations there and then so uh, we used we used to build integrations to connect between two systems and now we have OIC here it doesn't need much memory applications everything is hosted by Oracle so the language they use is SOAP services or everything communication between the systems is by XML or the files now terminologies usually people will get confused with these terminologies so these are the terminologies running in the market now people call ICS, EIC, OIC, OIC Classic, OCI so Oracle started first released ICS it is integration cloud services it is used only for building integrations connecting between two systems now with advanced options in OIC they came up with a package called AIC or OIC. So AIC means Autonomous Integration Cloud. So it was managed by Oracle and they released with the name AIC Autonomous Integration Cloud and they again changed it to OIC. The final terminologies and going forward in future we are going to call it only OIC and OIC Classic. OIC Classic is the one which they provide your application you install it and you manage it. Whereas just OIC is the one which Oracle manages we procure and we start using the application and the additional term which people get confused with is OCI so this is Oracle cloud infrastructure so please be careful with these terminologies OIC is Oracle integration cloud and OCI is Oracle cloud infrastructure this is where our OIC lies in OIC till now any questions Hello? Hi? Hi, please tell me. Yeah, no, you said OIC Classic is where we can maintain, right? Then what is the difference between OIC and OIC? Sorry, OIC is the one which Oracle maintains. OIC Classic is the ones which they give it to customers. The customers will manage their servers, customers will bounce their servers. So if they want any issue, customers will do it themselves. They have access for their full system application. So, it's a, so that means it's a kind of a private cloud or uh, just, uh, so what is it? So it's a kind of no, private cloud, cloud, right? Where you have more access. No, they, they give you access to the application where you can bounce. For example, if there's an issue, what you do? The customer needs to, just like a database, you see, or okay. uh, Fusion, what we see. In Fusion, we have two versions. If you uh, remember, one is they give you application, you install and you use it. Okay. It's on premise. The other one is on premise. Yes. The oh, other one is which okay. Oracle gives. Yes. So OIC is Oracle managed and OIC Classic is customer managed. So these things keep on changing because earlier they released ICS as on premise and then they made it cloud. Then they said ICS will be completely on premise and AAC will be like Oracle managed and it is autonomous integration cloud. So these things will be keep on changing, but for now the stable thing is OIC going forward. Then you said OCI, okay. right? That is the infrastructure there that we yes. need to buy from Oracle then? Yes. OCI is the infrastructure. This is where you start your building your applications. So the first thing is you procure Oracle cloud infrastructure, then you get OIC database or whatever you want, you can procure it on this particular OCI. Okay. So what is AIC? Autonomous Integration Cloud. It is nothing but it's just OIC, but the previous terminologies, just like few months back, they used to call as Autonomous Integration Cloud. Is it AOIC or AIC? Here I get confused. I, some people say it's AOIC. No? Yes. So forget, all the terminologies are gone only terminal is going to be is OIC Hello? Oracle Integration Cloud or they call just Oracle Integrations okay earlier it was like AOIC also they used to call Autonomous Oracle Integration Cloud so just forget everything going forward is going to be only OIC Oracle Integration Cloud
Are we clear? Okay. So now uh, everything related to, to there are all these uh, interchangeable names. ICS, AIC, OIC, OIC, Classic, and OCA, all these are interchangeable. interchangeable. It's not like interchangeable, it's like a evolution as it started, it started with okay. ICS. Then okay. it, they released as, they called it as AIC, then now they are calling it as OIC. Oh. Even a OIC was there when the when AIC was there, but still uh, it was like completely customer managed. And now they removed everything and they want to call it only OIC and OIC Classic. No AIC or no AOIC. So these things, they're all like removing that, calling the terminologies. Of course, ICS is still there. It is like a separate system with less features. Now the same ICS is integrated in OIC with extra features. That we will see later, like what we have exactly on OIC. We clear now? Yes. So, so question. So whether yes. whether whether we take OIC or whether we take OIC Classic. So OIC Classic is nothing but the on-prem version of OIC, right? Yes. So in any of the cases, whether it's OIC or OIC Classic, we have to have take uh, we have to have procure OCI Oracle Cloud infrastructure, right? Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. We will see all this on uh, day seven. Day seven, you will procure a trial version of OCI and then how you get the OIC, how you install DB and how do you connect, we'll all see on day 7. This training is not just about uh, OIC, we'll see OCI too. Great. Yeah. So now we have all the documents in this particular directory where docs.oracle.com, so whatever they add the features, everything they keep uploading into this particular URL. The navigation is once you log in, you go to cloud, pass and integrations. Under that you have all the features of Oracle integrations. Okay. So these are the prerequisites. So it will help you understand more on easily. Like ERP. So majorly the Oracle integrations, what we will be talking here about is Fusion, Oracle Fusion and OIC getting integrated. Okay. And with other systems, we have adapters, but we won't be discussing more about them. We'll be building integrations with Fusion ERP. Since people buy Oracle Fusion, they always go with OIC to build their integrations. But the different systems like if uh, SAP or some other technology ERP systems, they might not buy Oracle Integration Cloud. They might go for some third party applications. But whoever goes for Oracle Fusion, maximum they buy. OIC. So we will be building integrations with OIC and Fusion ERP. So here all the other applications are our applications. So to talk about talk about integrations in a simple terms, what do we do in integrations? We have two systems. Okay. Let's take any of the two systems. There is a company called A and another company called B. Now B is on Fusion. A is on SAP. But these two people do business with each other. So every day there is a transaction happening and now they both need to interact. And since these two are on cloud, you don't have access. You need a separate system to integrate these two. Let's take OIC as our integration tool now. Now, company A will send the data. Maybe let's take invoice or general ledgers. They send it in the form of file to OIC. We read the file and we push it to Fusion using the services which Fusion exposed to manipulate data or if not file there are other systems too like you can call the web services or you can call the rest APIs too to put the data in Oracle ERP fusion. Now so hope everyone knows ERP enterprise resource planning it is an application business application and rest SOAP so these are the two things where rest uses JSON to communicate and SOAP uses XML. These are the two web services which Oracle exposed and SQL, PL, SQL as uh, I don't remember name but uh, one person asked like where do we do it that we will see. In OIC we don't have access to do. We will procure a database and we will install an agent 
and there we will do all our validations, PL SQL procedures, everything. So, and next is FBDI. Hope everyone knows this who all worked on Oracle Fusion. It is file based data import option which Oracle provides. You can load your file to use CM and then run a job which will load to interface table and then you can run the import program. This is the Oracle terminologies. So web services, register PS, these are the three things which Oracle exposed. Mean like in Fusion you cannot modify data directly. We don't have access to the database behind the Oracle Fusion Cloud ERP. So we have this FBDI web services or REST APIs which we use to insert data. Using REST APIs we have op options even to update and delete to that we will see. Not all the objects are exposed, only few modules expose that. We can check that what all options we have. And next is BIP. BIP is a reporting tool which is present on Oracle Cloud Fusion where we built reports. So the reports like for example if a person needs a GL data we need to send like invoice data we will need to send invoice data to company A then we need to create a report in the format they need. Then we have two options one is you can directly send the report or you need to build an integration to fetch that report and send it to the third party systems. This we will see in deep but hope uh, everyone have an idea on these prerequisites. So you are talking about the PA oh. publisher right? Yes, BI not publisher, BA not BI report. No, 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 no. It's BI publisher, which is available on Oracle Fusion. Yeah, no, like both are available. Okay. Yeah. And like, can you please explain on the REST and SOAP? What are? So uh, these are the services, like uh, which communicate REST communicates on HTTP, and SOAP communicates on different models like even it communicates on HTTP and other services too. So these are two things which we use which go with the URL. Okay. One using that URL you can communicate with the other system. Oh, okay. Behind REST they use JSON. JSON is a language where they put the data in and SOAP uses XML. We will see in detail going forward how they work and what is the code in depth? Hey, F hey Felix, so, this is Bala. Yeah, yeah. yeah, please. Yes, Bala. Uh, quick question. So, yes. on the BA publisher uh, in the cloud, is this the standard version of the BA publisher or is it the enterprise version of the BA publisher? Version, I'm not so clear about, but Oracle comes with a BA publisher. Yeah, the reason I'm analytics. asking is it's the most of the time, most of the time, this uh, legacy, I don't know, all the way up to at least until 12.2 or something like that. The version of yes. the EBS, um, the version of the BA publisher that runs on EBS platform is like way, way too, <laughs> like, you know, it's not even close to what uh, you would see on 11G or 12G uh, version of the BA publisher. So my question is, when they, when they provide the opportunity to do that BA publisher on cloud, um, my question is, is that like an enterprise version of the cloud, which is uh, BA publisher which is totally different than the standard components that you get with the EBS? Because that's, that's, that comes as part of the installation. So you don't get like a separate uh, UI where you can drag and drop and group and do other things. But is this, I'm just trying to find what version will that be, that's all. So in terms of version, we exactly don't know, but it comes with the release. Once we procure the Oracle Fusion, this is a Fusion BA publisher we are talking yeah. about. Yeah, I can tell for that. So on the ERP, we come with... Yeah, Yeah, I already worked on this BA publisher on the Fusion side. So yeah, it's a standard one which will come with the Oracle Fusion. And uh, it's, and you have all the components, whatever you are doing in the BA publisher, available by default on the Fusion side. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this is Gopal. I just want to check one thing. Like, you know, when you're talking about BI, right? So, are you going to cover, like, you know, how we can? So, when the once the BI report is generated in Fusion, right? Um, so, the report I want to send it to some other uh, thing. Where today we are not finding any functions in the BI, you know. Um, so, 
Are you going to cover this one, you know, using uh, OICS, how I can send this report to other, um, you know, as an attachment yes. or something, you know, using, okay. Okay. Yes, yeah, there, that's are, fine. There, are, there are two ways. We'll discuss both and we will have a lab session too. Okay. Creating a report and then sending it. We will in, we have included that also in a lab session. We'll do both. Okay. One using integrations okay. and one using just BI itself. Okay. Okay. Thanks. So now talking about uh, integrations, so we can use this integration. We have monitoring, we have design. So we have a special tab called connections where we create connections, simplified connections. So you just enter the host URL, password, username. It's enough to communicate with the other systems. So it, it, Oracle has made more simpler. It's very simple now in our integrations to create connections between two systems. And there are vast number of adapters they have included in OSC. It can communicate with so many other systems. We'll see which uh, few systems in later. Now, here there are two things which we need to uh, understand: In inbound and outbound. So people do get confused with these OAC terms and ERP terms. So when we talk about we are building an integration to ERP system, the inbound and outbound is different. Whereas if we talk about OAC. Oracle integration cloud itself, you're just buying an Oracle integration cloud, then whatever you are bringing into OIC is inbound. Whatever you are sending out from OIC is outbound. Okay. In terms of ERP, now we have a fusion middleware ERP system and we have OIC. Whatever goes into Oracle is inbound integration, which we build. Let's say I'm building an integration on OIC and I'm getting data from somewhere and I'm pushing data to Oracle Fusion ERP. So this integration is called inbound. Now let's say we are creating a report, BI Publisher report on Fusion and now I'm sending this to a third party system using OIC. This is called outbound. Okay, some people will procure only OIC for integrations and they use it to communicate with multiple systems so they call inbound whatever comes into OIC and they call outbound whatever they send from OIC. So they, some people maintain a third party uh, application itself on OIC. Okay. So now whatever we talk is related to ERP terms. When I say we are going to build an inbound integration, we are going to build an integration which will send data to Oracle Fusion. When I say outbound integration, we are going to take the data from Oracle Fusion and send it to third party application. Be clear on this? Or any confusions? The same, right? Uh, inbound means ERP inbound will be coming to Artwell and OIC would be coming into Fusion. Outbound is outside from Oracle uh, Fusion. It's the same. When we talk about ERP terms, OIC does two jobs at a time. Okay, It will get the data from some other location and it will push the data to Oracle. Okay, There is inbound and outbound happening on OIC. When we talk about in terms of ERP, when I say I'm building an integration for ERP, then we just call an inbound integration. Data Oracle integration will fetch the data from third party system and it will insert data into Oracle Fusion. It's just a big difference because going forward we'll be calling inbound integration means OIC will get the data from third party application and it will insert data into Oracle Fusion ERP.